Hello, I'm talking today to Funke Opeke, who is the CEO of Main One, one of the first cables in the recent build-out of cables along the west coast of Africa. Funke, tell me, how are sales going? Sales are going well. Um, could be better, given how much capacity we have and how much demand exists in the consumer market for broadband access. But we are satisfied with uh, what we achieved in 2010 and we look forward to an even better year in 2011. And in 2010, what was the sort of uplift? In, in Kenya it was about tenfold in terms of the larger operators. What was the sort of uplift in terms of the shift from satellite to fiber? Well, you know, there was SAT3 here already and people were getting SAT3 access through Benin. So I don't think it was quite 10 to 1 but I would say definitely between two and for some of the operators, four to one, in terms okay. of what they were using previously and what they subscribed on the network. And so I understand there's been a, a I won't say a problem, but a, a set of issues in terms of getting that bandwidth spread out into the country. What, what, what are the difficulties there? Uh, what we have found, and mo most of the networks, um, the distribution networks as well as the long haul into city networks were really dimensioned to carry voice traffic and not uh, broadband data traffic and even though the operators were aware uh, that main one was being built and quite a number pre-subscribed the necessary upgrades and uh, redesign or optimization of their networks to deliver that much broadband capacity to end users did not really occur prior to uh, landing the cable here. So it's been a slow transition for them because they are able to deliver more now, but their subscribers would like even more broadband than they are able to deliver through their networks. And uh, a good number of operators are working through upgrades to their network um, for their optimization to enable them to deliver more broadband to the end users. So how long do you think it will take before those networks are upgraded? Well, it's an evolution. Um, and really depending on the kind of technology they're on. So we've seen some of the internet service providers rolling out 4G WiMAX technology. Uh, we have others who are deploying uh, more fiber uh, within metro areas, uh, people who are serving more small and medium enterprise and uh, corporates. And we also have the operators looking at uh, different technologies. So you have people like Etisalat working on rolling out. They recently acquired the 3G license that they are rolling out. And clearly it will take them a little more time um, to get that into the market. But we expect that, especially with the competition taking place in voice, that 2011 uh, will indeed be the year where all the operators will have to clarify and deliver on their data um, strategies to the market and most of those solutions if they stand a chance of capturing market share will have to be available this year. One of the mysteries in the market is, is now that international bandwidth is down to let's say $400 a meg. Um, you know, it's possible to go from London to Lagos for $400. But to go from Lagos to Abuja is about double that. What's, what's the issue? Because there's actually four national operators at least going from um, Lagos to Abuja. So we, we require some kind of unbundling in the market. Uh, but yes, indeed, that is the reality we face and one of the constraints just in terms of distributing the capacity that the intercity networks are still controlled by a few major players who are also um, major retail uh, players and hold significant market share and so access um, and cost and control of those networks is skewed in favor of their own internal requirements um, rather than being available to the market um, on an unbundled um, open access type basis. Uh, competitive basis yeah. and, and we would hope that um, as, as they face more competition in other segments, perhaps that is something that changes over time. But yes, that maybe, is Maybe at the local loop level. Yes, exactly, yes. Yeah. yes. Finally, um, I know when you built the cable, you put in a number of branching units which haven't yet been built out, um, places like Morocco and Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire. Where, where are you with those um, additional branching units? Um, we are um, continuing to engage in discussions. Um, 
with respect to each of those branching units. Um, some are a little further along than others, yeah. um, but it takes a mix of local partner regulation and funding for an additional landing to take place, and you have to have all those three in place to move forward. But we are confident that some of those landings will get built um, sooner um, rather than later. Also helps to have political stability, of course. Um, we couldn't do something now in Ivory Coast. No, that's true. In the case of South Africa, um, mm -hmm. you've been talking about an extension to link mm -hmm. up with SECOM. Mm -hmm. um, again, give us a status check on where you are with that. Um, we continue to engage with SECOM and, and um, look for ways to further um, our collaboration with, with them. Now that both cables are in service and should have a three-quarters service around Africa, um, from Nigeria interconnected in Europe through to the east coast of Africa. Um, so the physical build um, south from Lagos to South Africa to link up the cables is what's left. Uh, again, just looking at the dynamics of the market, East Africa is still digesting um, all of the capacity that has gone in over the past um, 18 months. Um, however, we feel for our respective businesses and based on the fact that we are private cables, uh, both open access, um, providing some degree of um, non-operator based competition into the market that we would be strategic and important for us to complete the build down the coast. So we are continuing so a complete to ring around the yes, continent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Funky, thank you for talking to me today and uh, we look forward to seeing what happens next. Okay, thank you Russell.